Today on Retire With Purpose, intentional goal setting in retirement, five easy ways to protect your savings from taxes and maximizing your social security benefits. Welcome to Retire With Purpose, a show specifically designed to help you maximize your financial confidence in retirement. Casey Weed is the CEO and Chief Visionary of Howard Bailey Financial, a certified financial planner and Wall Street Journal bestselling author. He's your host on Retire With Purpose. Thanks for joining us. I am Lee Kelso here with Casey Weed, Certified Financial Planner, the founder and president at Howard Bailey Financial. He's also the host of the Retire With Purpose podcast. And Casey, it's not very often that you have guests, repeat guests on the podcast. So George Schofield must be pretty special. <laughs> yeah, Dr. George Schofield came on the show back in 2019, episode number 109 of the Retire With Purpose podcast. And in that episode, he discussed with us how to set meaningful goals in retirement. And I call them back and I said, George, I don't know that we really address that question real well, so I want to dive a little bit deeper into how specifically you're helping your clients as a coach to executives and aspiring retirees. How are you specifically helping them set their goals? And also, we didn't really get into purpose and meaning, and that's a big thing for him. He, he coaches many of his clients on exiting careers as executives and business owners who had an identity that was tied to that career, how to shift that purpose into a second act and into their retirement years. And he discusses quite often, you've probably heard me talk about this before, having ponies on the track. He doesn't like purpose with a capital P. He wants you to have a lot of different ponies on the track rather than just one Clydesdale. Let's hear him explain it better. S some people can just do one and be perfectly happy. So again, it's a bell curve. I'm not providing you with a one size fits all answer. But the majority of people I work with are happier if they have two or three or four things that they're pursuing at the same time. And those are what I refer to as ponies on the track. So if you have three or four things going, not just one, you might work with one of them one day and another one another day. You might work with a couple of them on one day and then you might work for an entire week with one. The ability to go back and forth between multiple interests or multiple ponies on the on the track, including goals, by the way, leads to, in my experience, a much richer life and energy because where I begin to feel drained with one thing, working on a book in my case. I can only work on a book so, so much and then I want to throw myself off a cliff for a couple of days and then I'm I'm renewed. I need it isn't just enough for me to fall down and pant until I'm ready to come back and work on the book. I need some vol something vol that I can volunteer on, or I need client work, or I need to get involved with something of my with my wife, or I'm, I'm planning a road trip for us at the moment now that we're finally liberated. Whatever these things are, I get energy from being able to move from the other, and each of them provides energy to each other. You know, a lot of George's work has to do with the new world, the new fast-paced environment that we're living in, and how much different retirement is than it was for previous generations, largely due to how fast things are changing on an ongoing basis. And you know, he doesn't like to be known as coach, and there's a reason for that. I'm going to let him explain that here in just a minute. He likes to be known as a professional advisor, and I think this is along the lines of why we don't want to put together just a financial plan. I think a lot of advisors, they put Put together a financial plan, you go, hey, I'm okay. Everything's taken care of. The reality is life's going to happen and things are going to continue to evolve. And that's why we put together a framework for us to continue to revisit throughout a relationship. We have a framework to guide that financial future and continue to make better and better decisions as things evolve into the future. So why doesn't George like to be known as coach? Let's hear from him. So coach is a sports term that presumes, and we use a lot of sports metaphors, you know, we're a sports country, um, that presumes known opponent, a game with a score and rules. It happens within a certain frame, if you, if you will, tennis court, swimming pool, football field, soccer field, whatever, has repetitive plays, 
the has referees for the rules. And why I object to coach is that none of those things are true about our work lives and our professional lives anymore. There aren't rules. There isn't a referee. There's no coach out there who has tons of experience in in where I'm trying to go. I can go and get advice and hear other people's stories, but there's no one who knows more about my life than I do at this point. I certainly need professional advisors and I use them. But if I look at life doesn't happen inside a certain framework like a tennis court, it isn't involved with repetitive plays and you don't always know who the opponent is and there isn't a clear way of scoring. Other than that, the metaphor really works. I just don't think the sports, met sports metaphor works. Do I object to the word coach? Only because it's code for all those things I described. And I think we have to think bigger than that and realize that somebody selling me predetermined solutions for a known problem isn't going to serve me well in, in this post-COVID period. If you're looking for a financial planner that's going to put you in the box and tell you, hey, this is what you should do because this is what everyone else does, well, you're probably looking at the wrong advisor right now. You know, if you're looking for a financial advisor that's going to tell you what to do with your money, that's not us. And George isn't one of those individuals that's going to tell you what to do with your life. We're there to sit down with you and ask really good questions, provide you all the tools and resources so that in the end, you can decide what to do with your money. You can decide what you want to do with your life. It's not ours. I get, I, I get pretty quickly, and so do you, what they know and what they don't know. So I, it's my job to help them expand their their range of mo thinking range of motion if you will so that if if they've been inside a time capsule or a cannonball hurtling down the, the the career path we need to open that up we need to be able to say i'd like you to be patient and try some things first because you don't know all the things you need to know yet and part of it's going to be invented as we go so i'm sure that you have a way and your staff has a way of, in effect, mini contracting with people for them to do some of the work that you thought they might have done before they before they came in. The, the clients who tend to be attracted to me or stay with me are not the people who want the quick fix and the three questions and the and and the fix and the six steps. They're they're actually are saying, okay, I've been really good at what I've been good at until now, but I need to get good at some other things that will serve me well across the rest of my life. And that's why I'm here. Let's open that door and see where it takes us. You know, one of the interesting opportunities that I have is to ask my guests you know, somewhat of a selfish question. How did you choose your financial planner? Maybe you're getting ready to make that decision for yourself and you'd like to know from somebody like George, how does George pick who his financial planner is? Well, this is his criteria. So um, my checklist was I wanted somebody who was entrepreneurial and not necessarily embedded in a big firm. Might be somebody who had his or her own office, if you will, they're still attached to a, to a big firm, but they're not sitting in the middle of a big bank or a, or a, or a monolithic firm. That would be the first. So I wanted them to be, him or her to be entrepreneurial. That's one. Two, I wanted that person to get us in a way in which we could have a long-term relationship with this, with this person. Three, it had to be somebody that Linda, my wife, was comfortable with because the, we had seen enough occasions where, um, well, one of my friends tells the story that he and his wife went to see their financial planner, and the financial planner talked to him the whole time and never spoke or said a word to the wife, even even though she'd made half the money and and and, and uh, owned half of it. So Linda wanted a woman involved. Terrific. That was that was fine with fine fine with me. It needed to be somebody who understood that I wasn't going to retire and that the way I want to use my money might change over time or how I want to leave it might change over time. Well, there's a lot to think about there in George's list of how to 
find the right financial advisor. And if you're ready to take that first step, here's what I hope you'll do is be one of the next 10 people to call 866-482-9559 and schedule a meeting with a member of the Howard Bailey team. Or you can text consult to 866-482-9559. And at this meeting, we'll take a look at just how well positioned you are for all the risks that can come your way in retirement. Things like, well, health care and inflation, a stock market crash, lots of other factors. And just take some time to get to know you a little bit and how well you've thought about what you'd like your second act to look like. That's one of the things that you can do with a member of the Howard Bailey team. So text CONSULT to 866-482-9559 or call that same number and get on the calendar for a meeting to find out more about your Retire With Purpose plan. All right, we're coming up next with Marshall Johnson, Casey's co-host on the Retire With Purpose podcast, taking a look at some other big issues you're going to face in retirement. Here's a retirement reality check. There are new threats to your lifelong savings in the form of taxes. Have you taken the steps to prepare? The Howard Bailey team wants to help educate you on how to safeguard your retirement from the ticking tax time bomb. Learn how to leverage this low tax rate environment before rates increase by registering for our complimentary tax time bomb webinar hosted by National IRA Distribution Educator Ed Slot. Web times are limited, so register now by calling or texting the word BOMB04 to 866-482-9559. Call or text the word BOMB04 to 866-482-9559. Investment advisory services offered through Howard Bailey Securities, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Howard Bailey Financial does not offer legal or tax advice. Please consult the appropriate professional regarding your individual circumstances. Welcome back, and we are now joined by my good friend and co-host of the Retire With Purpose podcast, Marshall Johnson here with me. Hey, hey. And this is our opportunity to discuss with you one of the four articles that we send out every single Friday as part of our Weekend Reading for Retirees email series. Every single Friday, we send out four articles on trending topics in the retirement planning space, all designed to help you make better decisions about your financial future. We like to highlight one of those four articles on the podcast, and we did so in episode number 203 of the Retire With Purpose podcast. Check it out at retirewithpurpose.com or wherever you get your podcast. We discussed an article from The Street titled, Five Easy Ways to Protect Your Retirement Savings from Taxes. So Marshall, why did we choose this particular article? Well, number one, Casey, I love articles that don't just illustrate the problems that people have, but they provide solutions. So this is a great article that provides some solutions to what Ed Slot calls the tax time bomb. And geez, I've been watching uh, A-Team and MacGyver since I was a little kid, <laughs> and diffusing bombs is in my DNA, and I want to help diffuse this bomb. Well, and Ed Slot is one of America's premier IRA experts, probably the most famous CPA that we have in the country. And he's always talking about diffusing this tax time bomb called those tax deferred retirement accounts, also known as IRAs and 401ks, 403bs. So it's coming from a foremost expert, most importantly. And Marshall and I, we love golf. So we enjoyed the analogy that That's the article analogy. kicked off with. Yeah, there's a good analogy here where he talks about the difference between the front nine and the back nine. Yeah, and the front nine is where you start playing well, maybe. You know, Marshall and I will go out, maybe we'll shoot in the mid-30s on the front nine. Might shoot in the mid-50s on the yeah, back nine, falls though. falls apart back there. Well, you really need to put together a good front nine, a good back nine, in order to have a good round of golf. It's not a whole lot different than your retirement plan. But too often, I find that we're only focused on the start of that financial plan, which usually is the beginning of talking about investing, the beginning to talk about saving. We're talking about gross return. We're talking about gross income. All those things are great, but it's really about the net. How much are you actually going to get in net return? How much are your beneficiaries actually going to have after they inherit those dollars after tax? Not just your gross income, but also your net income. These are all very important things for us to keep into consideration while we're putting together a truly comprehensive plan. If you're not talking taxes with your financial advisor, then you don't have a truly comprehensive financial plan. Yeah, so uh, Ed goes into pretty good detail here about timing your distributions. You know, we talk about retirement income planning. You need to time it right. And he says there's too early, sweet spot, and too late, right? Yeah, that's right. We've got too early, the sweet spot, too late. And I love that. It really breaks it down very simply for you to understand where your opportunities lie. If you're too early, what is that? Well, if you have an IRA, 
you take dollars out of that before you're 59 and a half, the IRS is going to hit you with a 10% penalty tax on top of any taxes that you're going to owe on that distribution. Now, after 59 and a half and before 72, that's what's known as the sweet spot, because when you get to 72, now the government is going to take back control of that IRA and begin to force you to take distributions in the form of what are known as required minimum distributions or RMDs. Now you've lost control of your IRA, but between 59 and a half and age 72, now you're in control. This is literally the only sweet spot that you will have during your entire savings life where the government's not telling you what you need to do with that IRA, and this is where the opportunity lies. Yeah, it's the uh, little oasis, as Ed Slot calls it. And when you talk about that too late plan, Casey, that's, that's the do nothing plan, right? And I think a lot of people for years and years say, well, I don't have to touch my IRAs until I'm RMD age, and that's led that generation to have lots of problems on the back end. Yeah. I mean, what plan do you want to be on? Do you want to be on the government plan or your own plan? Well, I know the answer to that. You want to be on your own plan and you want your beneficiaries to be on their own plan as well. This leads into Ed's number two of his five ways to protect your retirement savings from taxes. Number two is focused on the SECURE Act. It's known as SECURE IT is what this is titled. Number two, SECURE IT. The SECURE Act introduced a new rule for your IRAs. Your beneficiaries inherit those traditional IRAs and now they cannot distribute those out over their lifetime. They're forced to distribute those balances out over a 10-year period. If it's all tax deferred, then they're going to be forced to potentially take very substantial distributions from that IRA in the peak of their earning years, and Uncle Sam could become your largest beneficiary. Well, and we're seeing more and more legislation. You know, we've got Secure Act 2.0 that's recently been submitted to the House. We're going to see lots of changes, and this strategy has to also evolve with the current changes in regulation as well. Yeah. And number three is Roth it. Well, if Roth we it. Roth it, if we actually had more dollars in Roth IRAs mm -hmm. than we do in tax-deferred IRAs or traditional IRAs, then we gain back control for not just you today and once you hit RMD age, but also during those years when you're not here and your beneficiaries are inheriting those dollars, it's better that they inherit those dollars in a Roth than a tax-deferred retirement account. Yeah, so if we're in that sweet spot, right, between 59 and 72, we can start to do Roth conversions into those accounts and try to minimize the taxation down the road. And you might be saying to yourself, yeah, but what if the IRS decides to change the rules again? Now the Roth isn't the best thing to do. Now they have RMDs for Roth IRAs. Well, if that happens, it'd be nice to have a little legislative diversification. And that's number four of Ed Slot's article here saying, insure it. Look into other tax-free income vehicles, such as cash value life insurance, as an alternative to a Roth IRA. It makes sense to have different types of accounts that fall under different pieces of the tax code so that you retain a little bit more control. Yeah, we talk about diversifying our tax buckets and you wanna know where your assets are. They all in tax deferred, tax free, uh, after tax accounts, or maybe you have that life insurance bucket and sometimes we're trying to move assets uh, to better diversify them. Well, and finally, avoid the death tax trap. Ooh. Right now, estate taxes, they've been up in the air for some time. What are they gonna be like in the future? We might know what they are this year, maybe Maybe you even have an idea of what they're going to be next year, but we don't know what they're going to be when you pass away. This is why you want to continually stay on top of an estate tax plan due to ongoing legislative changes to make sure that you're always protecting your estate from, again, Uncle Sam. Here's the bottom line. You can either complain about taxes or you can do something about it. I would rather see you do something about it. And maybe you didn't do anything last year. Well, you've got this year. So let's do something about your tax future right now. Sit down with our team for a complimentary tax analysis and a complimentary financial review at no cost. We'll put together this financial plan and deliver it to you in a written format by calling or texting the number on your screen. Stick around because up next, Next, we're going to be discussing Social Security, long-term care, and rules of thumb for how much you should be saving for retirement. Here's a retirement reality check. There are new threats to your lifelong savings in the form of taxes. Have you taken the steps to prepare? The Howard Bailey team wants to help educate you on how to safeguard your retirement from the ticking tax time bomb. 
Learn how to leverage this low tax rate environment before rates increase by registering for our complimentary tax time bomb webinar hosted by National IRA Distribution Educator Ed Slot. Web times are limited, so register now by calling or texting the word BOMB04 to 866-482-9559. Call or text the word BOMB04 to 866-482-9559. Investment advisory services offered through Howard Bailey Securities, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Howard Bailey Financial does not offer legal or tax advice. Please consult the appropriate professional regarding your individual circumstances. The fact that you're watching the program tells me you're probably smarter than that guy across the street, but you know, you don't know everything. You may have a question. Well, that's really easy to get a question in front of Casey. Just info at howardbailey.com is where you send your email, and we may use your question here on the program. Here's one, for example. Upon delaying Social Security, I know the max benefit is 8%, but what if you decide to draw benefits earlier? Can you still get a benefit that's less than 8%, or is it an all or nothing situation? Well, it is not all or nothing. You are, you are going to receive an increase every month that you delay taking that Social Security benefit. And I think it's important that you pointed out that 8% is the maximum increase in that benefit year over year. It's not going to be the actual increase for everyone. It really depends on your age and what your full retirement age is. The full retirement age for the majority of individuals today that are going to be Social Security beneficiaries is age 67. And you're going to receive that 8% increase in your benefit payout every single year from age 67 to 70. But before that, it'll be lower. So if you're between the ages of 62 and 64, it's 5%. Between 64 and 67, every year delay, it's 6.67%. And that's actually a calculation that's broken out by month. So it's 5 twelfths of 1% between 62 and 64. Your benefit increases by 5 twelfths of 1% every month. And then from 64 to 67, it's going to be 5 ninths of 1%. And then from 67 to 70, it's going to be two-thirds of one percent. So yes, you can delay. You don't have to wait a full year in order to get that full eight percent benefit payout increase or whatever it might be, depending on your date of birth and depending on what your current age is. And I would also encourage you to recognize that even though you might receive significant increases by delaying that benefit, it could take a significant amount of time to make up that benefit in the future years. It could take 10 years or more to break even by delaying your benefit if you delay it for too long. And what we find is for a lot of the families we work with, we like to see them file for that benefit early and enjoy it in those early, more active years of the retirement. And if they're wealthy individuals, they'll typically even end up with more money, more wealth in retirement. But the majority of Americans, they don't have enough save for retirement. If you fall into that category, then yes, continue to work, continue to save, continue to delay that benefit as long as you can. Okay, here's another viewer question. Uh, when people recommend saving 10 to 15% of gross pay toward retirement, does that include pension, Social Security, and 403B? Yeah, these rules of thumb, they're just so darn dangerous and helpful at the same time. Yeah, they're really helpful when you're far out from retirement and those guidelines are 10, 15, sometimes 20%, somewhere between that 10 to 20% of your income that you should be saving for retirement. That's just a rule of thumb. And it includes your Social Security as a rule of thumb, but it does not include a pension. So if you have a substantial pension that you're expecting, maybe you're able to cut that number back a little bit. Maybe you've had a substantial inheritance. Maybe you could cut that number back significantly year over year. So there are some things to include. You know, it really just comes down to getting something that's customized to your unique situation. And if you're far out again, it's great to say, hey, it's okay. We'll just wait and save as much as we can right now. We don't need a precise plan. And think about it. If you're traveling from the East Coast to the West Coast and someone says, hey, how do I get from Cal to California? You might say, head west. Well, eventually, you'll probably get close to California. You're probably not going to get to the exact destination. As you get closer, you want to dial things in. You want to pop on that GPS and make sure you're getting those turn-by-turn -turn directions to land precisely where you want to get. And that's what you want to do as you get closer to retirement. There's also something called the portfolio size effect. You know, when you're in those early years of retirement, or early years of saving, I should say, the more you save, 
It's the most impactful thing you can do. Save more, save more, save more. As you get closer to retirement, those savings dollars, saving a little bit here and there, it's going to have a minimal impact on how much you actually have in retirement. What's going to be more impactful is how big that portfolio gets. That's why we have to really dial in that plan when you get closer to retirement. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, here's the last question of the day. I've heard that long-term care costs could be upwards of a million dollars. What is your assessment of what we should realistically be prepared to spend on long-term care? I like that. It, it kind of sounds like uh, realistically, you, you feel like maybe you're getting something, you're reading an article that's more of a headline grabber, maybe it's something designed to sell you something, and, and I wouldn't disagree, but the numbers are quite intimidating, really. Uh, the Genworth Cost of Care study, it comes out every single year, and what it says is today we're looking at an average cost of care somewhere between $50,000 and $100,000 a year for an individual. And keep in mind, that number has been increasing at anywhere between 2 and 4% per year, depending on the state, depending on the type of care. So we've got home health care all the way to skilled nursing care in a private room. So it depends what type of care that you're going to need and what type of care you ultimately want. And the average stay in a nursing home, it's about two years. About 70% of individuals will need some level of long-term care at some point in their lives. Cost 50 to 100,000, two years on an average stay. So let's say it's $100,000, uh, that's 200,000, plus you've got a spouse, maybe it's 400,000 for the two of you, throw in inflation, you don't need it for 20 or 30 years. It could be a million dollars. However, that doesn't mean that you need a million dollars worth of coverage or even a half a million dollars worth of coverage because you have probably other assets. You have other assets that could be used to cover those expenses. You still have ongoing income that you could leverage in order to cover those expenses. Most of the families we work with, they've come to us after being sold or pitched a very big long-term care policy, and they say, I don't know if I need all this. I don't really want to pay for this much coverage. And we say, you know what? What's the goal? Is the goal to make sure that you never spend a dime out of pocket of your own dollars for long-term care? Well, usually it's not that. Usually it's, I just don't want to become a burden on my children. I don't want to be, leave my spouse destitute. And if that's the case, and you're willing to use some of your existing assets, then maybe you don't need that much coverage. Maybe you only need a couple hundred thousand dollars in coverage, and you can supplement it with those other resources. So get an analysis, sit down with our team, get a long-term care analysis, along with your tax analysis, your social security analysis, and we can share with you with all those different things combined what the best strategies are for you. And the first thing to do to get that analysis to, is to make an appointment with a member of the Howard Bailey team. It's really easy to do. Just call 866-482-9559 or text CONSULT to 866-482-9559. You'll have a chance to sit down with a member of the Howard Bailey team and review not only health care, but also taxes, inflation, stock market contingency, so many factors that can really disrupt retirement. How well positioned are you? Well, you can find out in this meeting. It can take as little as 30 minutes. You can do it on the phone. You can do it in person. Whatever works for you. It's 866-482-9559. That's the first step. Or consult. Text that to 866-482-9559 and schedule your meeting with a member of the Howard Bailey team. We're here next week at the same time. Hope you will be too. We'll see you then. Here's a retirement reality check. There are new threats to your lifelong savings in the form of taxes. Have you taken the steps to prepare? The Howard Bailey team wants to help educate you on how to safeguard your retirement from the ticking tax time bomb. Learn how to leverage this low tax rate environment before rates increase by registering for our complimentary tax time bomb webinar hosted by National IRA Distribution Educator Ed Slot. Web times are limited, so register now by calling or texting the word BOMB04 to 866-482-9559. Call or text the word BOMB04 to 866-482-9559. Investment advisory services offered through Howard Bailey Securities, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Howard Bailey Financial does not offer legal or tax advice. Please consult the appropriate professional regarding your individual circumstances.